Sometime in the late 1970s, the gravel war had finally come to an end. The endless feuding between red and blue had hit its climax. All nine mercenaries finally had their chance to relax, satisfied with a job well done. For a while, there was peace among Badlands. No Manco, no Grey Man. However, with no one to call these abandoned lands their own, a new set of villains arises. People not motivated by anger, jealousy or rivalry. No. Ones who are powered by the deadliest sin of all, capitalism. Suddenly, we see all corporations across the country sending their own mercenaries to try and claim these vapid lands. Will the war for Dust Bowl ever come to an end, or is this place doomed to an endless cycle of senseless, over-the-top cartoony violence? Welcome, Welcome to Open Fortress 2 Classic. Open Fortress is a popular mod for TF2 that hopes to combine the elements of these classic arena shooters into everyone's favourite dusty cartoon FPS. The devs saw a game with nine interesting unique classes and that shit fucking sucks and turned them all into one. Meet the mercenary. He is a guy. He likes action movies and he can't stop quoting them. He's like Saul Goodman the amount of fucking movie references he makes. However, this comes with one magical perk of knowing how to use every single gun you can imagine. Scattergun? Yep. Pipes? Oh yeah. Third degree? Oh no, it took fish on a stick 20 minutes to explain its one stat, so you know, it might be a bit tricky for him. At first glance, this game might just appear to be TF2 of one class, but you'd be doing yourself a disservice being so close-minded. It's Open Fortress. Right now, it's pretty much just the deathmatch mode, though, like, in the future, there are planned to be, like, more modes. It's basically, like, Team Fortress 2 Classic It's pretty much, like, an evolution of the TF2 gameplay with the original nine classes, the Heavy, Scout, all them. But Open Fortress is like, you know, what if instead of just those guys, it was some other guys doing something different? You got deathmatch, you got the mercenary, you got his own abilities, his own character. The retro mode, which is coming in the future, is going to be basically a remake of TFC, so it's going to have the dudes from TFC reinterpreted, more TF2 art style, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. This game is genuinely my favorite fan creation to come from the TF2 community, aside from maybe, oh, I don't know, freaking trade Dave Portal. Not to undermine the talent behind games like TF2 Classic, but Open Fortress, it simply ticks all the boxes for me. It's fun, fast paced, has a high skill ceiling, it's very charming, and yet, while it obviously borrows a lot from TF2, it manages to carve its own unique identity. One, mind you, that actually fits the fucking universe it's based off. <laughs> Oh my god, it's fucking Open Fortress. In this video, I'm gonna do my best to see what makes Open Fortress work, what it could do better, and hopefully get you interested in trying this for yourself. Because look at these fucking servers, man. It's an absolute disaster. Let's try and change that by checking out TF2's greatest mod. Also, I'm sorry if I sound a bit weird. I'm very sick of doing this video. I've got a fucking cold because I was standing in the rain for two hours while I went to uni. <laughs> Your first game of Open Fortress will go a little bit something like this. Uh, hello? Is anyone playing this game? Hello? It can be a lot to process at once, especially seeing boys fly past you at a million miles an hour like trains at the station. But eventually though, with enough patience, you'll figure out that you don't need to hold space to B-hop. You don't need to do any of that rapid tapping CSGO bullshit. Just hold space and you're flying through it. You also has A and D to strafe, and it's not like in TF2 where it can be a bit tricky on how you strafe. Or in Quake where you have to like, kind of like maneuver your mouse to like get a proper strafe going. You just hold D, you go D. You hold A, you go left. Wait, what? You hold D, you go right. You hold A, you go left. Simple as. Good news, strafing has been made faster and easier. Cool! If you're feeling discouraged after sucking ass at your first round, give yourself a little bit of time. Trust me, after about 20 minutes, I had this game under my control. The beast had been tamed and I was riding numbers around these boys. If you're used to playing surf b-hop servers, this will all seem very familiar. That's probably why this game felt so just second nature to me. However, I understand if you're a full-time exclusive heavy main, whose most about a movement you'll do is walking from spawn to the nearest teleporter, I can see how it becomes a big shift from what you're used to. However, this does lead quite nicely into my next section though, so... Cue the transition! <laughs> In this section, we're going to compare Open Fortress directly to TF2, so you can see how similar the games are and get a feeling if this is something you'd be interested in. So we've already touched on the movement and the lack of classes, so what else does this game bring to the table? I'm glad you asked, because quite a lot actually. Let's look at some of the ways Open Fortress adapts, adds, and switches up the TF2 formula. TF2 is one of the most expressive games out there. We've all heard the joke about TF2 being the most racial slurs you'll hear on War Themed Hat Simulator with only one class available. How are they going to let us feel distinct from one each other? Well, we get this. 
a built-in mercenary dress-up simulator. Just like on Flash, we get all hats unlocked from the get-go, with no conflicts. We can just go fucking nuts with this. Here's my guy. If you can't tell, I modeled him after everyone's favorite asexual icon, Jason Voorhees. I'd actually say this game could be more expressive than TF2. In terms of colors, red and blue are dead. Gone under. Boom. So we can wave goodbye to those colors. Thankfully, we aren't bowed by the horrendous shades of the TF2 paints. You get a choice of every hue in the rainbow, from piss green to LGBT. You can be as bright and obnoxious as you want. With all these options available to us, let's have a peek into some of the most creative sets I could find. Let's get down to brass tacks and talk about some real shit. Game modes, because unfortunately, Open Fortress has been caught lacking. Right now, there's only a handful of game modes playable. Of course, we've got Deathmatch, first person to get a certain amount of kills. It's very simple, it's very fun, and it's just easy to understand. You can just jump in, kill some boys, and if you're good at killing boys, you're good at winning the game, mate. The design of uh, Deathmatch's gameplay, with two ideas I had going into it. The main one was, I want to create an arena shooter that people who don't really play arena shooters can get into it, and they won't feel as alienated. Like, they can come in and be like, oh, I kind of get this. The hop is simplified, it's not like you have to find a certain thing, and you have to, like, time it. Like, no, you just hold down space, and you can focus more on the combat. And then the second goal I had in mind with it was, Basically, just make my perfect arena shooter like what I would want to play. We also got Team Deathmatch. Wow! This one is fine enough. However, it could be a bit annoying. You often get gangbanged by like 20 boys at the same time. But aside from that, it works pretty well. Especially if you prefer playing in a team than just all on your own. These are the main game modes. Basically, what you're going to be playing 90% of the time in this game. The thing is with Open Fortress, Deathmatch is basically the only fully developed game mode right now. However, they do have some other game modes that are kind of like side content and some more in store. So let's have a look. So we also have Arsenal. Which is also just deathmatch, but you get to choose your weapons at the start It's a little bit lame because it kind of defeats a lot of the fun Makes the game a bit more boring in my opinion because you can basically just choose the I win gun every time and basically just win Arsenal is kind of like a practice mode another mode to help like tf2 players ease their way in because just pick your weapons And it's kind of like tf2's little thing But we all, I always hope that people play Arsenal and then they decide to try taking off like the training wheels So to speak, you know, it's, it's a nice little like side thing We have just for funsies or also just to like kind of get good with certain weapons I remember when I first played this game There was like a trend where every single fucking person in the lobby wanted to play Arsenal for some reason And I'd be spending every lobby down on my knees with my hands up begging to play the fun game mode We also got ctf Although I couldn't find a single game of anyone playing. Womp womp. However, I've played it before, so I'm just gonna have to nick some boys' footage. I'm sorry about that. So yeah, this is basically just CTF and TF2. However, no sentry nests, no dumbass spawn camping, and no sniping at the fucking battlements. Thank fucking god, yes, man. So they made it peak. Instead of CTF being this boring ass waiting game until one team's like, oh, more, more, I think it's time we play the game. Here, it's a lot of fun. Because everyone's mobility is through the roof and there's no dog shit sentry nest. It kind of becomes this exhilarating tug of war with both teams switching from attacking to defending at a moment's notice. The second you see a boy grab your intel, expect him to be trimping, bombing, and getting the fuck out of dodge. The best way I can describe this game mode, it's like an online game of tag, but everyone gets to play as Sonic. All right. It's a shame not many people are playing this because it's very fun and I think works well for the new mechanics this game offers. Anyway, that's it. That's all the game modes. The end. So yeah, you could say the biggest issue of the game right now is the lack of game modes, but to me, it's not really a big issue. Because the one game mode they do have, it's just so fun. Most servers mostly just run deathmatch. Sometimes they'll get a team deathmatch server, it's mostly just deathmatch. We found that a lot of that comes down to there not being a really built-in, robust, like, system for variety to the table, like, like, allowing people to vote not just for the next map, but also the next game mode or the next mutator that could be turned on. Something that's coming in, like the next update, will be a vote menu that's built into the game that actually allow you to vote for like what the next game mode or mutator will be. I want you to keep in mind that this game is in alpha stage, not even in beta, fucking alpha. They obviously plan on adding more game modes. There's actually a list on their wiki page on some of the content they plan to add, so let's have a look. Also, I kind of want to mention, I don't know if this is an official wiki because it's barely got any information on it. The mercenary article in there to say he's from like Nevada and I'm like, <laughs> where did they get that from? The one I'm most looking forward to is Duel, which is basically an official implementation of MGE. If you don't know, MGE is 1v1 burst of 20 kills 
kills in a small arena. For many years, I've been advocating for MGE to be an official game mode since it's just so fun as it's become a staple within TF2 culture. The phrase, uh, MGE me bro, become an iconic symbol towards angry competitors who are still coping after the complete flop that is Face It. But don't listen to them because MGE is fun. It's quick, simple, and most importantly, shit gets fucking personal. There is nothing more satisfying than going 19 to 19 against some cunt you hate and getting that last final kill that cements you as the superior TF2 player and person in general. Here's a list of people I've beaten in MGE. It I can only imagine that Open Fortress MG games are only going to be faster, crazier, and more personal since you can't be like, uh, I don't even mean the mercenary. There is also plans for an MVM styled game mode titled Lockdown. There's not much information on this game mode, but from what I've seen, it kind of looks like a Horde style version of MVM. A bit like zombies from COD, but with a lot more variety in the types of enemies you'd fight. Really, like, we're not really certain if we're gonna have a co-op with this, but we do have a PvE mode planned, kind of far off from now, just because of just the workload it'll take, but like, the idea that we had going in when we came up with the like, concept for it was, it was our own Doom Eternal came out, and we played the Slayer Gates in that, and we were like, these are really friggin' fun, so we wanted to kind of replicate that with something in a web, and that was when we came up with Lethal Lockdowns. If you ever played the Slayer Gates and Doom Eternal, like, it's kind of like that. I'm excited to see what they do with it, you know, I'm a big Zombies fan, as you see in the last video, and so when it comes out, how about this? We'll do another giveaway for the first person who gets to round 100. Some honorable mentions of the modes. Domination mode, which is basically like the UT domination. Of course, the mutators, there's infection, which is just basically like the infected mode in uh, Halo. And Shotgun's Eternal, which is another Doom Eternal inspired one where you have a special super shotgun with a hook that you can grapple onto people with and shoot them and then you also have a chainsaw. Shit, man, that sounds crazy. <laughs> The maps in Open Fortress are a mix of the old and a mix of the new. All maps do return, however, since this game takes place in the future, the areas, once dry and destroyed, have had a chance to grow. Who would have thought that high tower could be so beautiful, man? Places like Tufort have changed dramatically, with the bridge even being removed. And even in a place like Harvest, we see that the season still changes, the mighty winter decides to blow in. All the old maps are retooled to better fit Deathmatch, and the new look they've been given makes each map feel fresh and exciting. Even the MVM mats get redone. Manhattan has turned into this really fun arena that loops round with falling scaffolding you can jump on. They've honestly done way more than they needed to do. Like, they could have just put in a few extra flank routes and a few doors, but no, they went the extra mile. Each map is given so much more attention to detail to better fit the world they're trying to build up with the story. Even just things like the change in weather and like changing the background, like changing 2 4 from day to night, it just goes so much to making this game feel special and unique. With the new maps, there's so many highlights. My favorite one is 100% control it's this like compound located up in the icy mountains and so that's a really nice layout and oh my god the music on this map it's just so fucking spot on that's this super euphoric beat i fucking love it it really gets you in a certain mood when you're farming frags by the way control is basically layout wise like it is basically just quake longest yard but like expanded around the biggest complaint people had about longest yard was that it was too small so we relegated that to being a dual mode map now control was basically made as like sort of means of having longest yard in deathmatch the middle area is pretty much just one to one longest era than everything around it is brand new. However, there's quite a few maps I've noticed that run rampant with placement textures and a lot of buggy collision. So there's still a lot of work to be done, but judging from the finished maps, I really like the direction the game is taking. I can't wait to see what some of these maps would look like finished. I've got good news for everyone in the audience. News that's gonna break the internet harder than Ralph did. Dream we've all experienced, but always had interrupted by reality. Well, you don't have to dream anymore. Cause MANPOWER 2 is finally here, boy! So this game's got power-ups. All of them are a little bit broken. Which is the point. Getting a power-up should make you feel like you're on top of the world. Let's start with a berserk power-up. Where you throw all your guns over your shoulder and let the nano machines take over, turning you into Senator Armstrong. One punch will be all it will take. The Berserk can reflect projectiles, but it's a little uh, finicky with the uh, timing right now. Like, there's yeah. something we're looking into. So you, like, punch the, the rockets back? I have accidentally gotten reflex of the Berserk, and it's very satisfying with, like, a rocket launcher. I just, like, punched it right back at them. However, the tricky part is getting up close. While it allows you to one-hit any boy with this power-up, it's made balanced by the fact that everyone in this game can go so fucking fast. Skilled players will see a Berserk player and play around his shorter range by either b-hopping backwards while shooting rockets and shit, or just, just getting the fuck out of dodge until it's over. This is how a power-up should be balanced. Giving you immense strength, sure, but you have to kind of lack in another area, allowing other players to be able to strike your weakness. 
weakness if they play well enough. Yeah, like, sure, Yoda's the strongest Jedi and all, but he's, like, four foot. If they had Yoda looking like he played for the fucking NBA, Yoda would be mad over power, and there'd be no Star Wars at all, if you know what I'm saying. While Berserk is a balanced power-up, I'm not sure that could be said about the crits power-up. This gives you straight-up crits for, like, 30 seconds, which lets you just fucking annihilate anything you see with no downside. I mean, sure, it's fun as fuck, but it's not really balanced. Like, the counterplay here is to just hope for the person you're fighting to either be a complete ass, or maybe the, like, PC starts auto-updating. <laughs> I think a good change to this might be to mark the user for death when it's active. This could give the power up a sort of risk reward element and give more people a chance to grab the crits for themselves off the person who had it. This goes for the other power ups as well. I think making them a little bit of a trade rather than just a straight up buff makes interactions with other players a lot more fun for like both ends. Obviously the upside should outweigh the downside otherwise it would feel like useless and why would I ever want to pick up a power up that makes me feel like I'm shit. Like the defense one could be so fucking annoying to fight against. Hitting 30 damage pipes might be the least satisfying feeling in the world. It's like you took my demo knight phobia and cranked it up to 200. How about it makes you slow down a little? Not much, but just enough so I can at least hit more of my 30 damage pipes, then I'd feel like I have a little bit of a chance in the matchup. That's the type of mentality I want to see going forward with power-ups in the future. I'm not a game dev, so I don't know, do what you want, but this is just my idea. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the music in this game is a fucking banger, straight on the Spotify playlist, I'm being serious. Tracks like Meta, oh, Facility, damn, and let's not forget Swimming Pools by Kendrick Lamar. I've been playing the music from the game in the background of this entire video, so I'll let you listen for yourself and you can make your own mind up. However, if you want to see me go in a little bit more detail, I actually covered the game's OST briefly in quite an old video of mine. The same video where at the end I started rapping for some reason, everyone started cooking me in the comments. I'll drop a link in the top right if you want to see that and, you know. <laughs> Let's talk about guns. Deep down, we all like a bit of guns. Some of us, maybe a bit too much. I'm not saying they should be legal. I don't think I'd trust this guy with an M16. But we all started playing TF2 for a reason. Shooting things is fun. The Arsenal Open Fortress is a mix of redesigned TF2 weapons and some completely new weapons. Best way to do this is to go through them one by one. What's different? Are they good? I'll be rating them on a scale from Turbo Liberal to Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, let's start with some old favourites. So the pistols return with a sleek new look. I love it a lot. It's like kind of a mix between the Pretty Boy's Pocket Pistol and the Lugamore. I love the new reload animation as well. It's incredibly slick and smooth. The pistol is your starting weapon. And on its own, it's kind of weak. However, if you kill someone else with a pistol, you could double up and start dual wielding. Now this makes the pistols actually pretty strong. The fire rate goes up. Now we're working with double the max size. So you can just keep unloading clips in. And the fire end just never seems to stop. I love the change. We're starting off super strong. I'm going to give this one a 4. One of my favorite subclasses, not just in TF2, but in gaming history, has to be Gun Spy. Spy is often cited as the weakest class in the game, and often has to rely on tricks and gimmicks to work. This often leads to people underestimating the pure power of Spy's revolver. This thing can fuck shit up in the right hands. And for me, there's nothing more satisfying than absolutely destroying some cocky scout or tryhard soldier with only my insane spy movement and free well-placed revolver shots. They thought I'd be a free kill, but ended up as another clip in my epic gun spy montage. Hope you brought tissues! <laughs> I just want to let you boys know that my gun spy is a frequent topic of discussion within the spy community. People fear my gun spy. So when they found out that it would not only be returning into open fortress, but the chains of spy shit health and slow speed would finally be removed, the player count dropped by over 80%. Finally, the lead vest had come off, and my limiters had been removed, and my super saiyan spy had been unleashed upon open fortress. <laughs> Too 
shotgun is kind of the same, but it works pretty well in the year, I don't know. Yeah, the shotgun is just the same as in TF2, but... You know, what else do you need to change about the shotgun? It's the fucking shotgun, man. It already looks cool enough. It's from fucking Aliens, man. Did you know that? It's the shotgun from Aliens. Or as I like to call it, the I win gun. So the minigun in this game is one of the few weapons I have a bit of an issue with. The new design is fine, although for me personally, I think it looks a little bit goofy. Maybe it's like the weird color scheme, but I can't really put my finger on it. But that's not even my issue. My problem is that it's just way, way, way too strong. Heavy's minigun in a vacuum is probably hands down the strongest weapon in TF2. Its DPS is absolutely insane is the main reason why Heavy can carry MBM gains on his shoulder. Yeah, we tried to balance it with the rev up time because we made it so you can't, you know, do that thing with Heavy where you can rev it up in preparation. The only reason it isn't overpowered is because it's stuck on Heavy, who is a slow, fat piece of shit, and he has trouble getting up close to a well-coordinated team. However, imagine a world where they put the minigun on the scout instead. I can guarantee TF2 will become the least fun you can have online. So when you put the minigun in a game that makes Scout's top speed look like the average pace of your granny shopping at Tesco, it can be a bit of a problem. Luckily, it's not too bad since they actually reduced the ammo count to 25 shots, which means you can only fire it for about 10 seconds before it runs out. So it's not completely broken, however, it's still a little bit bullshit, because all you have to do is get close, which isn't hard in this game, aim roughly in the right direction, and boom, you win! I'd like to see the I win gun either made into a super weapon or just changed in some way. Maybe if it slowed you down or made you unable to b-hop while you were firing, it could be an effective patch, but you'd have to like test it in play sessions. I would imagine it would require you to put a bit more thought into when you want to deploy the weapon and add opportunity for other players to do counterplay. Players could have a chance to escape when the rev is completed instead of just being hunted down at top speed with a barrel shoved at their ass. Either way, I'm gonna keep exploring the fuck out of it because I'm simply evil. The sniper rifle, now called the railgun, is probably the biggest weapon overhaul in the game so far. I'm still gonna keep it in the returning gun section because it essentially works the same, even though it is very different. Now the saying that sniper is overpowered has become a very common opinion within the TF2 community, and that's a debate for a completely separate video, but I do have good news for you sniper haters. In this game, the sniper rifle has actually been buffed. Yup! But if you close your eyes Body shots now do 80 damage and you can headshot without scoping. Now this is actually sound like a disaster, but for this game it actually works quite well. I actually think they managed to solve the whole sniper is overpowered debate in this game. The reason the whole argument started is because most classes do not have an immediate sniper counter except Don't stand in the sideline. Get out of the sideline. Stop standing in the sideline. <laughs> However, in this game, if you don't want to be sniped, you got to speed it up, sunshine. Because trying to snipe a moving player in this game is like trying to catch a fly with chopsticks. But if you manage to pull it off, ooh, it can feel fucking fantastic, son. So this is definitely the most disappointing weapon in the game. It's literally the exact same as the pre-Jungle Inferno flamethrower. But for some reason, it doesn't even have a fucking air blast. So not only is the hitbox like super jank as fuck and is based off like ping for some reason, it loses an entire mechanic to boot. And also, the only mechanic that makes the weapon actually kind of interesting, mind you. So yeah, the strategy with this is literally just fucking WM1, which is made worse by the fact you're zooming around maps on crack. Super fast WM1 pyro with no fucking brain is literally a playstyle in this game. I'm not going to give it that much shit because it's stated in the game that this weapon is just a placeholder and is very much unfinished, which is, you know, completely fair and, you know, it doesn't really deserve to be shat on too hard. Oh yeah, the flamethrower is going to be completely reworked eventually. One of our top level players contributed a big, like, pitch document with, like, drawings and everything. And I looked at it and I showed it to the devs and like, this is fantastic and that's what we're going to go with. We're all pretty confident that's going to fix it. That's going to make it satisfying to use and I think players are going to like it. I'd, however, I'd probably prefer if the weapon was just kind of taken out just for now while it was being worked on or maybe kept on some of the experimental maps because it's by far the least fun weapon to use right i fucking love what they did with the grenade launcher in this game first off the design it's just so slick and clean and a massive improvement over the tf2 one don't get me wrong the grenade launcher design in tf2 is very iconic but the model is just so fucking massive and i can barely see anything in front of me and don't get me started with whatever is going on with these fucking barrels man this one is just miles bare the animation is super smooth and there's so much weight when the mercenary cocks in another grenade I fucking love it, man. This shit gets me, like, lubricated, man. It gets me oiled up and turned on and ready to fuck. I'm usually complete dog shit hitting pipes, but in this game, we fucking hit those 
hundreds, man. Far across the map, don't even worry. Mechanically, too, it's just so much better. They actually found a way to make grenade jumping fun and not just a slow gimmick that sucks ass. In TF2, you have to shoot pipes on the floor, like awkwardly shimmy over to where they end up rolling, and then you gotta like time your jump perfectly with the blast to only end up going nowhere and get killed at half health or looking like a complete and utter brain tard. In this game, you shoot the ground and whee! Much easier, much more fun, and I actually think it's easier to jump around with this than it is with rockets. This is coming from a guy who has a three minute time in Jump Academy. Like, I've been told before by some people, including people who work on a web, that like, they think the China Lake's like their favorite grenade launcher they've ever used, period, in an FPS, and I'm like, okay, damn. So this is getting a five stars from me, I fucking love it, I wanna take it out on a romantic dinner, sweet talk it, take it to bed, and just make him my fucking Good friend and chum! Aside from the new model going hard as fuck, barely taking up any space compared to the TF2 one, the rocket launcher acts basically the same. But what really makes it work is how beautifully it complements the movement in this game. Perfectly timing a b-hop with a rocket to boost yourself way further than you'd expect, which you could then combo by bombing another player. Might be the most satisfying maneuver you can do in fucking all of TF2 history. No changes were needed to be made. The rocket launcher is one of gaming's most fun weapons, and here, it's no exception. So yeah, that's all the returning weapons. Yeah, that went on a bit longer than I imagined. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, we still got the new weapons. Fuck! In the world of Open Fortress, every class was given at least some representation. Except Engineer. This even reaches further into the dark, decrepit ghetto of subclasses. Yes, I am talking about Demo Knight, my arch enemy. But thankfully, they actually made it fun. Gracie, Gracie Amor, Gracie Amor, ah, I love you, please. No bullshit resists. Here we get a chainsaw. You get one charge that basically functions as the same as the tide turner. This opens the door into the crazy world of trimping, which I'd need to consult the sacred solar light Jedi text to figure out how to do properly. Oh, read them, have you? Well, I page turners, they were not. All I worry about is getting close, and then you can, as they say, let the blade do the work. I like this weapon a lot, however it can be very, very, very janky. So I'll have to give it a 4, but a 5 is in order if they do manage to fix the jank. Super Shotgun! I feel like a version of this weapon should be in every game. It's so satisfying. If you've ever played Doom, it's exactly like the one in that game, because you don't get like a chain to swing around on. Mm. One shot, don't fuck it up. But if you hit that shot, oh my damn! Oh, it's like actually jizzing all over your opponent. So on the surface, putting automatic rifle Call of Duty weapons in TF2 sounds like a recipe for disaster. As shown by Lazy Purple, the SMG is probably the least satisfying weapon in the game. You're getting a couple of little shots in and you inevitably die. It's frustrating as heck. However, I think Open Fortress was able to pull it off. These weapons shoot fast, hit hard, and are great ways to finish off already weak opponents. While they're not my favorite to use, they suit themselves well for a mid-range and can come in handy. So, I think they have their place in the lineup. I slightly prefer the Burst while as doing a quick 90 or so damage from good tracking can be very satisfying, rather than just spraying bullets everywhere like some goofy Roger Rabbit ass shit. Anyway, so yeah. Not bad. So, this game is taken pretty much from Quake Live. If you don't know, in that game, that weapon is just so fucking annoying and busted. However, in this game, it's balanced quite well. First off, it's range. It's not nearly as long. So you're not getting burnt all the way from Greenland by a fucking laser you can't see. Second, the DPS isn't so insane that your health gets drained in like three seconds. Third off, there's barely any knockback. I'm not a massive fan of this weapon, but it's pretty fun and iconic, so I say let it stay. So I'm just gonna do every weapon in a quick mini section, because this is just going on for way too long, and I want to talk about other things. So yeah, um, dynamite. The dynamite in this game is super fun. I love how you can jump with it, and it explodes on the ground. Definitely the best use of a throwable grenade I've seen. Way better than fucking pre-Fortress 2, oh my god. The nail gun is a cute little tie-in with TF2 Classic but it's a little bit shit. I mean, it's good in hallways and it does a lot of damage, but trying to aim with it is way too unreliable, especially with how fast people go in this game. Trying to track moving players with like the needle gun in TF2 is hard enough. Like, you see how many people play fucking Battle Medic in pubs, yeah, like in zero. So in this game, where people are flying around mentally, it's pretty fucking impossible unless they're in like a tight room. Crowbar is goofy and both super weapons make you feel like fucking Zeus, man. So yeah, that's all the weapons in the game. Overall, Open Fortress Arsenal is fucking banger. I don't think I need to add anything else. Every weapon in here is so fun. There's, there's so much diversity, and each weapon kind of has their own gimmick, has their own use, has their own skill ceiling. Except the flamethrower. Flamethrower sucks ass. As you can see with the scores, weapons are either a 4 or a 5 or a 2 or a 1. If the bad weapons got fixed and a few of the bugs were ironed out, every weapon could potentially be a 5 out of 5. So yeah, we're looking at a fucking banger on our hands. Uh, isn't this game just Quake? Question I often see people 
people ask when this game comes up in a conversation is, does it play like TF2 or does it play like Quake? What is that? This is more Quake than TF2. <laughs> Quake Fortress. To answer this question, I decided to hit the lab and do something I thought I'd never have to do when I started this channel. I actually played TF2 and concluded that the game sucks and I will now be switching to daily Geometry Dash content. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, first level. Oh, wait, this game's actually kind of sweet. We love you too, man. No, what are you? What? No, stop! I obviously knew what TF2 plays like, but I don't think I'd actually ever sat down and played a Quake-like arena shooter before. So, I did a little research, a channel first. From my research, I picked two games I could compare it to. The old classic, Quake Live, and a newer game that had been regarded as the best in the genre. Diabol di diabolical. Diabolical? Diabolical? Diabolical. I gave them both an honest try to see how close they are to Open Fortress, so we could determine if this game is suited more for TF2 players or for Quake players. Let's find out. The Quake Live. Five pound for this fucking ten-year-old game. Oh, fucking god damn it, man. Fuck it, we'll have to rage the budget. First thing I noticed about this game is that it looks like complete shit. Yeah, this is an old game, fair enough, but, it's, uh, but I do want to point out that this game came out three years after TF2. Anyway, beside that point, I picked the eyeball guy because he, he looked pretty cool, only to immediately regret it, finding out he makes this disgusting noise every time he jumps. So we're going to have to go with the skeleton. So we've got all the classic weapons you'll find in Open Fortress. Rocket launchers, shotguns, machine guns, blah, 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 blah. Mechanically speaking, this is a whole nother beast. This game is fucking nuts. Servers aren't only filled, they're fucking overpopulated. Your average lifetime in this game, I'm not even joking, is about six seconds. And there is a 0% chance you will go in a game without dying at least once. While your average lifetime in Open Fortress is a lot smaller than it is in TF2, you are still given a lot of breathing room to find your footing. In this game, the second you spawn, you're in a fucking war zone. You need to be on point moving as fast as you fucking can. Moving in this game is not nearly as easy as it is in Open Fortress. When I was trying to get clips, I was literally getting bullied by everyone in my lobby for being incredibly shit ass and having the world's worst KD. And this is coming from someone, and I'm not trying to suck my own dick here, but usually 90% of the time gets top three in Open Fortress lobbies. I'm now playing this game and getting bottom three. However, once I explained that this was literally my first ever game, they all stopped calling me Pipsqueak, showing me in the lobby. Us and stealing my clothes while I was in the changing room. They actually tried to explain how to play their game, and here's what they said. If you master Quick Live, you'll master any FPS game out there. First, never stay still, and don't do the same thing twice. And don't always go to the right, go left, right, forward, Pressing backward, forward then left and, and right, Pressing and then forward. Jump, also, we'll when you get hit well. from always anything, do a check free what you're trying to time to time you are. <laughs> fuck it, no, fuck it, no, I give up, no, gathering from that. Open Fortress is a lot more like TF2 than Quake from what I'm saying. But let's quickly glance at the quote unquote best game by a landside to see if, you know, maybe in the future uh, the game's got a bit more similar. If what they meant by best game by a landside was Fortnite item shop ripoff and completely fuck empty servers, then yeah, sure, I guess this is game of the year. Diabolical is very shiny, neat, and tidy. It runs well, has nice graphics, but. Oh, I don't know, man. It just kind of lacks a soul. It's definitely a lot more Quake Live than Open Fortress. It feels exactly the same mechanically, but the stiff strafing, the focus on tracking weapons. Opposed to Open Fortress is fluent and free strafing and more of a focus towards quick burst fire, high damage weapons. It kind of makes the game a lot less satisfying to play for me. That might just be my TF2 brain rot kicking in, but for me, it's just I did not have a great time playing this. Hopefully with these clips I'm able to demonstrate through my pain and suffering that this game does just not feel like Open Fortress. Maybe the genre isn't for me, but I can tell you one thing. When I play Open Fortress, I pop the fuck off. Awesome. I was, I, was on, I was never on the naughty list, I'll say that much. Oh my god! Mom, get the camera! Oh! <laughs> mommy! Mommy! <laughs> when I play this game, I... Seven damage a splash, are you fucking joking me? So if the research concluded, I think it's safe to assume that Open Fortress is without a doubt more TF2 than Quake. While yes, the game borrows a lot, it has deathmatch, free for all, the arena format, as well as some of the weapons and focus on faster gameplay. When it comes down to sitting down and playing the game, it just feels like TF2. This is TF2's movement. These are TF2's visuals. This is a TF2 mod. So if the topic of this game ever comes up again and someone says it's a super hardcore, anti-casual, competitive game, it's really not. It's hardcore, but in the fun, killing way, not the this is gaming gamers, speedrunning, smash melee, hyper technical way. Please don't worry. Give the game a go. If you're a TF2 fan, I'm sure you'll have a good time. So, 
here we are at the end. Team Fortress, Fortress is probably the best TF2 mod on the market right now. So why is no one on? Like, honestly, from my experience playing this game for this video, Open Fortress is one of those games where people really do want to play, but no one is brave enough to start the party. My strategy for getting footage for this video was to invite one or two boys to an empty server, give it about five minutes, and boom, everyone was joining. We had a full lobby. This shows me that people are 100% interested in the game. They're out there checking the server menu every day to see who's playing. We just need more warriors brave enough to play by themselves for a couple minutes and not jizz too early and leave. But why are people still interested if no one's on the fucking game. It's because this game appeals to players like me, right? My first thousand hours of TF2 weren't spent defending the last point on upward or building sentry nests in 2-4. It was stuck in community servers. Ground roots, classic servers run by people like you and me. Farming frags, shouting at boys in the voice chat. To me, TF2 has always just been a chat room with guns. And yeah, I enjoy playing competitively now and then, and I like working as a team, but that's not what kept me around for so long. It's all use. It's the people. The spirit of those old community servers is kept alive in games like this. Jump around, talk some shit, hit some fat juicy frags, and when you're ready you can log off. So if you're like me and you're in for those simpler times where games felt more like group chats and frags meant more than a dumbass leaderboard score, then Open Fortress might be the mod you're looking for. Holy shit. Oh my god, what the fuck? This looks so cool, man. Nah, 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 what the fuck? Nah, I take all back, man. This is what I wanted. 2007, man, that was peak TF2, nah. Fuck, why did I make my video on this? That's a good question, actually. What if I made my video on this? What if I was also a three-foot coughing baby? Hmm. Huh? Do, do I? 